Hello my friends and welcome back to our channel Home is where our heart is. My name is Dane, author of the book Knowledge to Forage, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants and Trees. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thank you all for joining me here on this incredibly beautiful autumnal morning. Before we even get started, let's just take a moment to bask in the ambience of this incredible view. Now today, I've got an extra special tree friend to introduce you to. This tree gifts the earth an abundance of food every autumn that's great for wildlife and it's also incredibly good for our health too. Plus, there's something very, very special that grows within the leaves of this tree. And this tree goes by the name, the sweet chestnut tree. So if you're interested, then come with me and we'll walk over to this horizon where you can see the sweet chestnut tree growing on that hill and we'll dive into the world of the sweet chestnut tree. So here we've arrived at the sweet chestnut tree. These trees are incredible. Look how unique they are when they're covered in their prickly husks. It's easy to see this tree standing out from amongst the crowd. Now, sweet chestnut trees can grow to a large size. They grow to around 35 meters tall and they can live for around 700 to 2000 years, but they can even surpass this age because the oldest sweet chestnut tree in the world is thought to be over 4000 years old and that sweet chestnut tree grows in Italy. It's called the hundred horse chestnut tree and it's called the hundred horse chestnut tree because an old legend tells that there was once a queen of Aragon and her hundred knights and it's said that they all were able to take shelter in this sweet chestnut tree from a severe thunderstorm. Now the sweet chestnut tree is in the Fagaceae family, which makes this tree, the sweet chestnut tree, related to the mighty oak tree and the queen of all trees, the beech tree. But of course, what makes this tree extra special are those delicious sweet chestnuts. These sweet chestnuts are adored by people and wildlife all throughout history. These sweet chestnut trees, of course, are an incredible value to wildlife. And when I listen carefully right now, I can hear the squirrels scurrying around and dropping the husks to the ground. Now, this tree is originally native to Southern Europe and Asia, but now you'll find it growing widespread across the world. And this is because the Romans loved this tree so much, they planted it in the countries wherever they traveled in the world to provide food for the future generations. And that reminds me of that amazing proverb, blessed is he who plants a tree without expecting to sit in its shade. Now to identify a sweet chestnut tree is super, super simple. Firstly, we have its leaves, which are long, green and glossy with serrated edges. Then if you look at the center of the leaf, you can see it has a distinct, almost yellow spine running down its center. Its bark is a grayish shade of brown with vertical markings running up the trunk. These vertical markings can sometimes twist together covering the trunk in an almost geometric pattern. And the best way to identify a sweet chestnut tree is to wait till the autumn time. This is because this is when the tree will be absolutely covered in these bright green spiky husks, making it easy to see amongst other trees. Once you've found what you think is a sweet chestnut tree, take a closer look at these spiky husks. These husks aren't just a little bit prickly, they are extremely prickly. Its spikes are long and thin, and when you squish them open with your foot, you can see the seeds inside. The seeds are the sweet chestnuts, and these are a shiny reddish brown color. Now to harvest these sweet chestnuts is a lot easier than many think. Lots of people come out and try and pluck them from the tree. And even with a glove on, these husks are so prickly that can be very painful. 
but what you actually have to do to harvest sweet chestnuts is to harvest them from the ground because when they're ripe they fall down so let's head under the tree to collect ourselves some sweet chestnuts You see around me here under the tree, there's hundreds of sweet ripe chestnuts that have fallen to the ground. We won't have to look far. And you see they're splitting open where the sweet chestnut has got so large. Let's try and get this one out of the husk. Wow. Would you take a look at that what a beautiful sweet chestnut now sometimes sometimes you'll find when you open up the husks that you get almost little empty shells this can be because of two reasons one a lack of rainfall the tree didn't get enough water that year or secondly these flowers before these sweet chestnuts were chestnuts, they were flowers and they may not have been pollinated so the tree just formed an empty husk. Now you can find them laying all around the ground and there's no special tool or method that I've ever found to get sweet chestnuts from their shell. All you can do is pull them out with gloves on or just simply squash them open with your foot. That's normally your best bet. And if you want to tempt fate and shake some ripe sweet chestnuts out the tree, you can do that, but do it at your own risk. Now, if you're lucky enough to find some big, plump, sweet chestnuts, these are incredibly good for our health and they make a great addition to our diets. A single sweet chestnut contains protein, fiber, vitamins. They're very, very rich in B vitamins. They contain vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B9, B12, as well as vitamins A, C, calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and copper. How incredible is that? an absolute wealth of health benefits locked within a sweet chestnut. Now you can eat sweet chestnuts fresh if you like, but I don't think that they're very nice. When you eat them fresh, they dry out of your mouth and I don't find them very enjoyable. But if you let them age, if you take them home and leave them on the side for two, three days, the starches within these nuts, they transform into sugars, making them taste like the beautiful traditional sweet chestnut that many of us know well. Now, you can eat them fresh after you've dried them to make them taste best, or of course you can roast them over an open fire, or you can even boil them. I personally prefer to boil them and you can make a sweet chestnut soup. But there's one thing you have to make sure to do to your sweet chestnuts before cooking them or boiling them and that's to score them. That means to make a big cut down the brown red shell. This stops them from exploding. Now not only are the sweet chestnuts incredibly dense nutritionally they're also powerful medicinally too as is the rest of the tree in traditional herbalism which is the knowledge passed down through the generations the sweet chestnut leaves are used as a natural painkiller to help ease things such as achy muscles and bones and conditions such as arthritis the leaves and bark are also used to treat infections such as throat infections in our airways and lungs and conditions such as bronchitis it's because these sweet chestnuts are so packed full of nutrition they've also been used to help people build up their strength recovering from illnesses or to just help them build their strength up in general but here's where this tree's medicinal properties get very interesting because this tree that's been used to fight infections since the days of Alexander the Great and Socrates has now been found by modern science to contain a special molecule new to science and this special molecule hidden within the leaves of the sweet chestnut tree 
has been shown that it can neutralize the superbug MRSA. Researchers from the University of Colorado found that growing naturally, hidden away within these leaves of the sweet chestnut tree, is a special new molecule that's never been found before in the world of science. This molecule has been shown and demonstrated that it has the power to disarm even the strongest strains of MRSA by knocking out the bacteria's ability to produce toxins. How incredible is that? Hidden away, within the sweet chestnut tree's leaves is the ability to neutralize the superbug, the antibiotic resistant superbug known as MRSA. Superbugs are one of the biggest threats to global health today and millions and billions of pounds are spent in labs every year trying to create stronger antibiotic medicines but yet here we are with them growing freely on trees all around us. Now, not only were the leaves of the sweet chestnut trees found by science to contain these incredible superbug fighting activity, the sweet chestnut seeds within these prickly husks were also found to have anti-tumor properties and be an incredibly rich source of antioxidants. Now, if you'd like to welcome the beauties and benefits of the sweet chestnuts into your life, you can and it's super, super simple. And there's only one other tree that you may mistake the sweet chestnut tree for, and that's the horse chestnut tree. But it's really easy to tell the difference when we know how. So let's quickly learn how to tell the difference between the two. Firstly, you have the husks. The horse chestnut tree's husks have much less spikes and the spikes that they do have are kind of small and quite thick whereas the sweet chestnut tree's husks are they're a lot brighter shade of green and they're much more prickly they're absolutely covered in prickles and then we have the leaves the horse chestnut tree's leaves are what we call palm made which means they grow like an open hand whereas the sweet chestnut tree's leaves just grow with single leaves and then the seeds inside are really easy to tell the difference between the two because the sweet chestnuts tend to have a flat side to them with a little tuft of hair on the top whereas the conkers are just smooth and round. Now when it comes to the mythology that surrounds the sweet chestnut tree we travel back in time to ancient Greece where they believed in some mystical creatures known as nymphs. These nymphs in Greek mythology were mythological nature spirits who appeared as beautiful young women that were associated with various elements in nature, such as nymphs of the sea, the valleys, trees, forests, and more. Different from Greek goddesses, they were not necessarily immortal, but lived much longer than humans. The nymphs of the forest, trees, and woods were called the dryads. For the nymphs known as the hammer dryads, a tree was said to be born with them, which their life was tied to. While the tree flourished, so did she, but when it died, she also passed away. For this reason, both nymphs and gods would punish mortals who dared to harm the trees. Korea is one of the hammer dryads. She was the nymph of the nut trees who lived in the forest, making her the nymph of the sweet chestnut tree. And as for the folklore that surrounds the sweet chestnut tree, there isn't much to be found because this tree grows in many countries all around the world where it isn't native to. And it grows in these places because the armies of King Alexander the Great planted them all around the globe as they traveled around. And they did this to provide food for the future generations. Blessed is he who plants a tree who doesn't expect to sit in its shade. <laughs> As always people, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to do all their modern world things such as like this video, share it around, leave a comment to say hello, ring the bell, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in owning all this knowledge in your hands, then check out our book, Knowledge to Forage, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants and Trees. And of course, most importantly of all, take care of yourselves and I'll see you all next time. Peace. The sweet, sweet chestnut tree produces the sweetest nut there'll ever be. Protected within its painfully prickly husks, you'll find the sweet chestnut tree's seed. 
popped into the pockets of Romans. The sweet chestnut tree crossed the seas, planted across the world by Alexander the Great's armies. <laughs>